Hello and welcome back once again with the topic of errors. Now we want to do some statistics. Yeah, we said there are random errors and the random error make one measurement not that secure. Yeah. What we can do about it, we have also already mentioned in a previous video, we can simply not measure once, we can measure more. Not twice, would also not, in reality, a, a number of, let's say, 90 measurements would already allow some statistical methods. Yeah. What do we expect from these statistical methods? So, ooh. again, a graph. Okay, I will again draw a graph. That's the measured value here. Measured value. And this here is the true value. And then now, and here, I write the count. How many, how many I have. And then I divide my measured value. into sub spaces, into sub areas yeah. and every time, for instance, I get now a measurement here I set the count to 1, I get a second measurement here, I set the count to 2 I get a measurement here, I set the count to 1 I get a measurement here, I set the count to 1 I get a measurement here, I set the count to 1 I get a measurement here, I set the count to 1 I get a measurement here, I set the count to 1 I so get a measurement here, I set the count to 3 and so on and so on and so on So there is then some some distribution piling on yeah, where we can get an idea how, how those measurements are distributed So these are the error classes here yeah, and what we could expect is that in the middle we get a lot of counts. Somewhere around the true value, we get a lot of counts. Okay, and somewhere outside, I'm not right, the counts will get less. I'll make just a dotted line here as a helper it will probably look a little bit like this so the farer I am away from my from my true value the less might be the count I am observing okay so in reality there is a number of, of 90 measurements should give already a good a good feeling about how this is distributed and usually usually you see something like like this yeah. such a curve such a curve is called normal distribution or Gaussian distribution. Looks like this. Yeah. Pretty much like I've drawn here. Yeah. So there's a maximum here. It's also called bell curve because it looks like a bell, Gaussian bell curve. And this gives how probable it is to reach, let's say, this value. Yeah? It's that probable. So this is now a probable call, measured value, and this is the probability. Okay, so we can see here in the middle, it's very probable, 
the further I go outside, the less probable it is. Okay. And here in the middle, I do have the average, the average value of all measurements. Yeah. This this x square yeah, is one divided by n and the sum of all measurements. If I have 80 measurements, I sum up all 80 measurements, divide by 80, and I have the average. Yeah? Average value. It's in the middle. What if the average value differs from the expected value? Yeah? Then either it's really wrong, yeah, the thing I measure, or I do have still some uh, systematic error left. Yeah, because if I know it should be here and the average is here, then I can compensate it because then all my errors do have a systematic error. Uh, all my measurements do have a systematic error on it. Okay, I can compensate it. Then. If I'm not sure if I'm here or here, then I have to take this for granted, this middle, this average value. So I could take this average value and that's then my measurement. Okay, so that's one statistical method. I, I agree it's not very sophisticated, but it works. Okay, one thing we want to know is pff, what does it mean? How reliable is this, is this average value? I mean, if I measure a table and I once measure it's one meter long and then second time I measure it's two meter long, I cannot say, okay, I will just say it's one and a half meter long. <laughs> because, I mean, this a too much distribution is in this are in these measurements. How much distribution there is? There is also uh, a thing which is called Standardabweichung in German, uh, standard deviation in English. So there's the standard deviation. There are two, mainly, mainly it's always this, uh, the sum, it's again a sum, okay, of all measurements, and this time I only look at the difference between the measurement and the average value, okay? but not only the difference, because then negative differences would also would reduce and positive differences would would uh, increase yeah and I want to have differences which are really far away from the middle value I want to count them drastically more yeah? so I square it Zack. Yeah? and of course I need to remove the squares then yeah it looks already a little bit like this uh, Fehlerfortpflanzungsgesetz, the error uh, law. Yeah. Looks pretty much the same. And there are two, I'll write it a second time here. This is still the same. And then there are two definitions. One is the sigma. And this is exactly like the average, yeah? and one is the S, and there I take here one less. <laughs> what is this good for? Yeah. This one is called the standard deviation of the test sample, of the sample, okay? This is called the standard deviation of all. Yeah? Of all measurements. If I'm only having a subset or a small n, I'm using this one. Yeah, This is somehow compensating that I only use a subset. If I have a big n, yeah, then I will use this one because then I'm sure I covered almost all possibilities. If I'm not that sure that I covered all possibilities and get a nice curve out of it, 
then I use this formula. That's the only difference. So this is standard deviation. And this is the average. So the average is my measured value then after the method and the standard deviation gives how reliable it is. What does it mean? Standard deviation. If I'm looking at the Gauss curve, then we have here plus minus one sigma. Okay. In this interval here, we do have already 68.3% of all measurement. So with a probability of 68.3%, I'm within one interval of standard deviation. So if the standard deviation is 0.1 millimeter, within 0.2 millimeters, I have 68.3, a probability of 68.3 that one single measurement is hitting this with an accuracy of 0.1 millimeter. Okay, if I have an accuracy of five millimeters yeah, or a standard deviation of five millimeters, then I have here an area of 10 millimeters where 68.3. I mean, depends on what I measure. Yeah? If I measure the planet distance to the moon, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. If I measure the length of my pen, it's not that fine. Okay, and if I measure the radius of a nucleoid, yeah, of an atom, it's just guessing. So one sigma, sixty-eight dot three. Okay. Then two sigmas. Two standard deviations interval. Yeah. We already have a quite huge percentage. 95.5% are within this interval. So we're pretty sure we are inside. Yeah. And also to mention it, to have it, to have it uh, also covered in three sigma range. So plus minus three sigmas. Then we do have already 99.7% of all measurements are in this interval. Mm -hmm. So this is what the standard deviation is telling us. It a little bit shows, yeah, because if I calculate the average, I can give it with three decimals, with 10 decimals, whatever. Yeah, it looks very accurate. And so I need to have the standard deviation at side, yeah, and then it would look better, let's say. I can guess better how, how exactly could this really be, yeah. Like I said, this is the standard deviation for the sample. And this is the total standard deviation. Standard Deviation der Stichprobe, Standardabweichung der Stichprobe, Standardabweichung der Grundgesamtheit. That is German terms for this. Okay, so that's it for the statistical methods. So basically, it's just calculating the average. We do it in every grade, right? Oh, what's the grade average? 2.0. 3.0, whatever, ah, doesn't really matter. Uh, and of course the standard deviation. Uh, those two values show a pretty good picture how reliable our measurement is. Good. Now we know a great deal about measurements. We know what is measurement, well, we know how 
uh, how reliable measurements are, uh, we know what a sensor is and so on, and all the stuff we know, we know uh, schemes of measurements, uh, we know reliability of measurements and how to deal with it and so on. Yeah? So we can measure. Next topic we want to, to discuss in the next videos, let's call, yeah, is we want to transfer the measured value to another point. Yeah? Just because I measure, I don't know, I measure the temperature on the sun, yeah? if there is a gauge in the satellite, I cannot read it. Yeah, I have to somehow transfer the data to Earth. Yeah, it's an extreme example. But if I measure, I don't know, the, the temperature outside, it would be very convenient to read it on the inside. In inside my flat, I want to read the temperature what it's outside. Yeah. Therefore, signals need to be transported. And this is our next topic, next videos. We're talking about uh Transporting, transmitting signals. Yeah, for this time, thank you very much for listening. Here next time, goodbye.